Nathan Wade is the holder of the attorney-client privilege that he had, at least for some time, with his one-time lawyer, Terrence Bradley. Um, And he has asserted the privilege and said it would be totally inappropriate for Judge McAfee to talk to his lawyer, even behind closed doors and chambers, about anything that was said between the two of them. So has the judge issued a ruling on that motion? And if he has, do we expect Bradley to actually appear in chambers and have the conversation or not? Yeah, great to be with you again, as always, Megan. Listen, what's going to happen, it, I think it's at 1.30 uh, Eastern time this afternoon is when this uh, in-camera review is supposed to occur. Uh, and all that means is, as you mentioned, it's just behind closed doors. It'll be the judge, Mr. Bradley, you know, his attorney, uh, and and the judge's questions, okay? The judge, ironically, the law sometimes is quirky. The judge has to listen to the evidence and look at those text messages before he can actually decide if he's allowed to look at them. And and by that, I mean, if he's, if he's allowed to actually use them in making the decision in this case, because he can't evaluate whether or not they are covered by attorney client privilege unless he knows what they are and how the information was gathered. We talked about this the other day, lawyers, sometimes when they represent their friends, their business partners, they might know things Uh, that are outside the attorney-client relationship. If you pick up something when you're out having beers with your friends or at lunch or things like that, that's not necessarily covered by attorney-client privilege. So the judge has to has to look at this stuff and find out what is the source of this information, and and then he can decide if it's covered by attorney-client privilege. But he's got to look at it before he can officially look at it, if that makes sense. So that's coming this afternoon. Of course, and and if— Let's say Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis went out to dinner or to drinks and they saw Terrence Bradley at the time. That's not privileged. Terrence Bradley can't assert privilege just because he happened to be the lawyer at the time. That would be information that he did obtain via his personal knowledge. Now, he testified he didn't get any info about their relationship from personal knowledge as opposed to via the attorney-client relationship. But this judge clearly by the end of that last Friday hearing had doubts about that assertion. And that's what the judge is going to be looking to test in their private conversation today. Yeah, and and this goes back, if you remember, a couple of filings ago. It's hard to keep it all straight. But uh, Ashley Merchant, who is the attorney uh, for Mr. Roman, the co-defendant in this case, she, when she first named Terrence Bradley, she said, look, Terrence Bradley is going to come to court. He's, he's got this information that's not privileged, that wasn't gathered in the, in the scope of his, uh, his representation of Mr. Wade. So she made those representations to the court. And we can infer from the testimony that we've seen that, that she has text messages, okay? She has a conversation with Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley has has confirmed the existence of the text conversation. He has he has mentioned and talked in in court about some of the test some of the text messages. So between uh, what he has talked about and what has been been listed in the pleadings, we can infer that Bradley has talked about Nathan Wade and Fonnie Willis and their relationship and when it began, and that it's not helpful to Willis and Wade. And so that's why we see the state fighting tooth and nail to keep this out. The uh, the judge actually ruled, I think it was Thursday or Friday, Nathan Wade had filed a motion asking the judge, you know, not to even not to even question Mr. Bradley. But the judge said, no, he's going to have to he's going to have to get into that. And so the further the longer this goes on, the the more the state fights to to keep this information out Honestly, in my opinion, the worse it looks for them. Because if you remember, this is really about a conflict of interest and whether or not Fonnie Willis is making money off this, basically, okay? So the longer it goes on, the more Nathan Wade is paid by the hour. And by the way, prosecutors uh, never get paid by the hour. This is the first I've really ever seen of this with a couple of small exceptions here in Georgia that were for much, much less per hour. It's like $45 an hour. But the prosecutors don't get paid by the hour. The more they fight, the more they dig, the more the conflict of interest potentially becomes very real. And so that's why all of this matters. People are asking me, what about the guilt of the accused? What about those kind of things? Well, we're not there yet. This is about the fairness of the system. If you don't have a fair-minded prosecutor, one who comes into the investigation or the trial of the case without a conflict of, of interest, if you don't have that kind of fairness, fundamental fairness, you don't have due process. 
And without yeah, due you, process, you, can't, you don't have you a can't system. You can't run right to the trial. I refer people back to the Duke fake rape case back in 2005 and 2006, where there was a corrupt DA who didn't much care whether he had a alleged victim making up lies about the three Duke lacrosse players. What Mike Nifong wanted was to win re-election in a minority-majority community, and his pension would go up if he won a re-election one more time. And he decided he had a winner if he pushed this woman's allegations, even though they turned out to be BS. He wound up getting disbarred. He had wound up spending a day in jail. So what in that case, if we had followed the logic of the people coming to you now, we would just, what about the guilt of the accused? Let's get right to the trial of these three accused guys. No, if there's a corrupt DA prosecuting the case, you have to stop and make sure that corruption is addressed. It's ferreted out. People understand how bad it is, if it exists at all. And that's what's happening right now to make sure there is not a corrupt DA pushing these charges against Trump and all the others. It's completely appropriate to do. And, you know, it would be nice if they would be a little bit more cooperative about forking over information. Now, that the, the thing you said about Terrence Bradley brought me to a question. Terrence Bradley definitely texted with Ashley Merchant. There's no question. She she showed him a couple of the texts when he was on the stand. He seemed very uncomfortable. He was caught. I mean, I don't know why he texted with Ashley, Ashley Merchant if he didn't want it coming out, right? But we saw the one where she forwarded him her whole motion to disqualify, saying the affair began back and, you know, way before 2022. And he said, looks good. Who could testify to the affair? And he said, no one's going to burn that bridge. And we appear to be looking at even more. Then he gets up on the stand against his objection, right? He tried to avoid it and said, everything is attorney-client privileged. All my knowledge about their relationship is covered in the attorney-client privilege and I have no personal knowledge. Now, Phil, that either means that he violated the attorney-client privilege when he spoke to Ashley Merchant, or it means he lied on the stand to the judge. It's one of those two things. There's no other alternative. Am I wrong? Well, I think you're, you're pretty much right on that. And this is why he looks so uncomfortable, I think, you know, um, and, and this is why he, he, he's really trying his hardest to, to not have to go down and answer questions uh, because he's really caught in a trap. Okay. I mean, and he's between a rock and a hard place on the one hand, you know, he's got to think about his, his own reputation and all this. He's got to think about whether or not Nathan Wade is going to make a bar complaint um, for violating attorney client privilege, if that's what he did. But remember, Ashley Merchant was very sure that the text messages and the things that he would testify to were not actually covered by attorney client privilege. So, you know, he's kind of between a rock and a hard place. He doesn't know if he, he needs put to himself accept there. that. He put yeah, he himself there. You, he needs to you and I both know as lawyers, if somebody texted you saying, Phil, you know, what about all that secret stuff your client told you? You would respond saying, <laughs> I can't reveal that to you. It's covered by attorney client privilege. Much as I'd love to share with you, go knock on somebody else's door. This guy gave it up. He clearly gave it up to Ashley Merchant. And I'm going to give this man who I don't know the benefit of the doubt and say he did that because he did have personal knowledge. I mean, most attorneys absolutely know you do not violate attorney-client privilege, period. I mean, it's just grilled in you from the first day of law school. So I believe that this guy would know not to do that. And he probably gave it up because he did have personal knowledge. And then when he got, by the time he got on the scared, he was scared on the stand. He was scared. Yeah, this is a big case, obviously. And this is the kind of thing where sometimes people may say things, they may do things, they may text things and not really think about how this may come out later. But we all tell our clients, you know, you know, first thing you do is is don't talk. OK, keep your mouth shut. Don't say anything. And the reverse is also true. As lawyers, the the less we talk about our our clients cases, the better off we're going to be. And so um He's he is between that rock and a hard place. I hate to repeat myself, but I really don't know other, any other way to put it. Uh, I think that he wants to get in that room and get out as fast as he can. He's probably <laughs> hoping that the judge asks him as little as possible. Nevertheless, he's going to have to answer questions from the judge, and the judge is going to use 
his, whatever he learns today, the judge is going to use that, Megan, as a basis for determining what comes next. Because as of right now, they're scheduled for closing arguments on this hearing on Friday. But uh, the Trump team, of course, is asking for the evidence to be reopened. I've got uh, sources who are telling me that other defendants may be weighing in on that because I think they're sharing the cell data. So we may see other filings. But we, we don't know if Friday is going to be closing argument or if it's going to be more evidence. Uh, but in any event, the judge can't make that decision until after he hears from Bradley. And if he decides that these text messages are not covered by, you know, attorney-client privilege, and by the way, there's a good argument that Nathan Wade has waived any attorney-client privilege because his prosecution team said Ashley Merchant was a liar. They said she had no good faith basis for even going here with these things. And so she's, I think, entitled to to rebut that. And so if the judge says, no, this is this is something she can get into, we've got to reopen the evidence so that, that, you know, this can come out in open court and on the record. I want to tell you about the Association of Mature American Citizens, or AMAC, an organization dedicated to America's seniors. AMAC stands out today by not only advocating for senior issues, but also by pushing for conservative values that affect us all. Did you know you were in a left-wing organization if you're over there in that other one? If you join this organization, you're not just supporting America's senior citizens, you can become part of a movement defending our freedoms and securing our nation's future. Plus, membership brings you exclusive benefits, like discounts on travel, dining, entertainment, special insurance rates even. Regardless of your age, if you are driven to preserve freedom, AMAC welcomes you. Sign up now at amac.us slash Megan. And for a limited time, get a free gift membership for someone who shares your love of our great nation. Don't miss out on this chance to make a difference with AMAC. Join today at amac.us slash Megan and extend the invitation to a friend or a family member for free. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.